Hello and welcome to another Digimedia Pros tutorial. I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. The goal of today's tutorial is to demystify the 360 degree video post workflow. In this free tutorial, I'll show you how to import 360 degree videos from a Ricoh Theta S camera, prepare those videos in the Theta S desktop video app, import and edit the footage into Adobe Premiere Pro, export the video from Premiere Pro CC and verify that the video is ready for publishing to YouTube using the GoPro VR player. Although this tutorial is specific to Adobe and the Theta S camera, the workflow strategies are pretty much the same regardless of which camera, stitching app and editing app you use. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and let's get started. So the first step in our process is to import the videos that we have in our Rico Theta app into the computer. Now I'm here on a Mac, I just plugged it into the computer via USB port. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna have the Photos app pop up and show us what's inside the Rico Theta S. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the videos that we want and we're gonna click on Import All New Videos. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now what it's doing, it's importing the videos and you can click on the top icon here and you can see the progress. It's gonna take a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some editing magic and I'll be right back. As you can see, it already imported one video and it's almost done importing with the second video. So there we go, we have both videos completely imported and you can see the last import right here on the left or you can just go to videos and you'll be able to see your videos at the end of your library. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to last import. Now to export the videos, most of the time, most people on the Mac will just take it, drag it and drop it to the desktop and that will export it. Now you can do that. The problem is if you do that, it will strip away the metadata that is required to tell the stitching program that this is a 360 degree video. Do not do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select both videos by clicking on one and then shift clicking on the next one and that selects pretty much all the videos. Then what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to file, export and make sure you say export unmodified original for two videos or in your case it may be three, four, five videos. But make sure you export unmodified original. Do not export modified videos because it will strip away the metadata and then the stitching program will not recognize it. So we're gonna go ahead and click on export and then you're going to leave this as default. Click on export again and then we're gonna select a location we're just gonna create a folder on the desktop called a 660 degree videos. And then we'll place it in there. We'll click on export videos. And now it has exported the video. So if we go to the finder and 360 degree videos, you have them right there. So now your videos have been exported and they are ready for stitching, which is the next step in the workflow. Now that we are done importing the video, the next step is to stitch that video. With the Rico Theta S desktop app, it's very simple to do. Just run your Theta app, then go to File, Open, and you wanna to go to the location where you stored your videos. In my case, it's under 360 degree videos, and then here are your videos. Now you can only open one at a time, which means that you can only stitch one video at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first video, I'm gonna click on open and you're gonna get a pop-up that says convert video, which is basically the stitching process. The input file is the video you just selected. The output directory is where you wanna store it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select stitched videos because that's where I'm gonna store it. You could keep it in the same directory. And for the output file name, Rico automatically appends an underscore ER to it. So you know that's your stitched file. Once you've got that selected, you can click on the start button and then it'll start doing the conversion process, which may take a while depending on your computer resources and how big the file is. So as you can see, it's almost done converting or stitching. And then as soon as it's done, the file will be saved under the stitched folder and you'll be able to see the file in the actual Rico Theta app. So here you go, here's the file running and you can see you can actually move it and we can go move forward and you can see how I'm actually controlling. So this is a su successful stitching of the file. Now that you have this done, 
you can continue on to the next step, which is importing this file into Premiere Pro and doing your editing in there. So now we are at step three. We're done importing the video from the camera. We went ahead and stitched it. And now we're gonna import the stitched video into Premiere Pro. What I've done here is created a, a basic new project called a 360 degree workflow and stored it in the folder under 360 degree videos under Premiere Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and click on OK. And now you see the project open, it's completely blank. So the first thing I wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to file and we're gonna go ahead and import some videos. Now remember we have those stored in my desktop under 360 degree and then we have the raw and we have the stitched. I'm going to import both on purpose because I want to show you the difference. So we'll go ahead and click on import and you can see here's my raw videos and here's my stitched. I only stitched one, not both. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sequence real quick just by dragging and dropping. And this is a sequence of the unstitched video. Now you can see this is the unstitched video. This will not work. You will not be able to turn on the VR viewer in Premiere Pro and use this properly. So I'm going to go ahead and take the stitched video and create a sequence for that. So we'll do that. Now you can see that it is stitched properly. It does not have the two fish eyes right and left. So now that this is stitched properly, I'm going to show you in Premiere Pro CC 2015.3, you have the ability to change your viewer, your program monitor, into a VR friendly program monitor. What you do is you go into this wrench here, settings for the program monitor, you click on it, then you go under VR video, you will see settings and enable. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on settings and explain some of these settings. One of the changes we're going to make, because we are now working with 3D stereo, is we're going to say it's monoscopic. After that, you're going to tell it what kind of capture view for the horizontal and vertical. Normal 360 degree video is going to be 360 by 180, so you can leave that as is. Now the monitor view is how much do you want to see in the viewport. If I leave it at 90 and 60 degrees and click on OK, then what you do to turn on the VR mode is you click on the wrench again, you go to VR video, then you say enable. And there you are. Now you can see that we are in VR mode. I can actually drag right, left, up and down and move around the 360 degree field. And you can see here where I'm positioned. So I can go back to the front by tapping zero here and typing zero here. And then I'm facing forward again. But the viewable area is pretty small. It's not like YouTube. For this area to be viewable like you would see it on YouTube, what you want to do is you want to go into VR video again and settings and then change this to 160 degrees by 90 degrees vertical. When you click on OK, you'll see the viewable area change and it's more of the viewable area you would see in YouTube. Now, what I can do, go to my timeline, I can press play as I'm playing, I can actually drag around and look at the video. So from this point on, I can actually do my editing as I normally would. So let's say we cut this here. We'll go ahead and uh, get rid of this section here. And now we've got sort of an edited section with VR video, just standard editing you can do, you use your normal tools, you can use everything within Premiere to do your editing. So you can see right here, it's actually going to cut into the other one. So let's go ahead and remove this for a second because I want to make it really short on purpose. So now that we've done the editing, let's say this is the most perfect edit I've ever done and I love it. Now what we want to do is we want to export it so I can publish it to YouTube. The best thing to do is to go ahead and go into File, Export, Media. You're going to have your standard export that you do in Premiere. However, in 2015.3 version, if you scroll down under the Video tab, you'll see VR Video. You want to make sure you select that, and then you scroll down more and you can say if it's monoscopic or stereoscopic. So we're going to leave it as monoscopic. 
I'm going to go ahead and click on the file name and select for YouTube. So I'm going to store it there. I'm going to click on and then I'm going to change the file name to final. Click on save. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on export. And it's going to go ahead and export the file. And once it's done exporting the file, I can open this up in the GoPro VR player app to verify that it has correctly exported the file for YouTube. So now I can verify in my folder under for YouTube, there is the file. Now, if I press play here, it's still not going to look like a 360 file. I'll show you that in the next step. Now, for the final step to verify that the export of Premiere Pro worked properly, instead of uploading it directly to YouTube, which we could do, but then finding out that the metadata wasn't written correctly to tell YouTube, hey, this is a 360 video, what I did is I downloaded the free GoPro VR player, which you can get at GoPro, just do a Google search, or watch the bonus video where I tell you where to get it and how to use it. But once I run this app, I can go into my directory or folder where I have the YouTube video that I'm gonna upload and I can drag and drop it in there. And there you go, you can see that this is the edited file. You can see it's really short, right, compared to the other one. And you can see that it is properly working as a 360 degree file. So that means that everything worked properly and now I'm ready to take this file here and upload it into YouTube, which is your final step. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope this overview of the 360 degree post workflow will help you in your 360 degree video projects. Finally, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today and please remember to check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, articles, and practice assets at digimediapros.com. So until the next tutorial, I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone.